Oh, trying to reconnect. Everybody's going. They can see us. We're live. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. This is Jake Kleachko. You're watching Catholic Best Practices live on October 4, 2017. Today is the feast day of St. Francis of Assisi. <laughs> oh, no, that's not what I meant. So. But anyway, uh, yeah, well, we're going to comment a little bit about that. You're going to hear that word later. But anyway, Assisi is, is, is a town in Italy. Okay? We need to make a pilgrimage there one of these days. But anyway, <laughs> let's read the gospel for today. It's from uh, St. Luke, chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And another said to him, Oh, sorry. And to another, he said, follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury the dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. <coughs> and another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first, let me say farewell to my family. Let me go bye-bye to -bye. <laughs> my family first at home. And Jesus answered him, no one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. So here is uh, the, the continuation of the gospel from yesterday. Remember how yesterday they were on the way to Jerusalem, right? And uh, they were uh, met, uh, met with some resistance in Samaria, the town of the Samaritans. So today they are continuing that journey. And along the way, he met these people that he tried, you know, enticing and calling into, uh, into the, the discipleship with him. But they gave all sorts of excuses. They gave all sorts of reasons why they could not immediately follow our Lord. What does that mean, Joe? Joe. Yeah, here's, here's where your word comes in. Discipleship is not for sissies. Discipleship is not for people with no backbone. Discipleship is not for softies. It's not for marshmallows. Discipleship means toughness. It really means you got to have guts. It really means... You have to have courage, you have to have strength, you have to have grit, you have to have resilience. You got to be tough to be a disciple, right? Because the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Now, can you uh, stomach that? The fact that you also, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, will have nowhere to lay your head? Of course, that's uh, both figurative and, and literal in, in terms of our Lord. He didn't have possessions. He didn't have a home, right? He was far from home, the home of Mary, right? So he could he would sleep and rest wherever he could as lo, uh, while he was on uh, the road preaching about the gospel and preaching about the good news. Um, he had no time to care about uh, you know the the uh, pleasantries and luxuries of the world. He had a mission to fulfill. Okay? So you need to be tough. You need to be strong. You need to be persistent, consistent, resilient, um, uh, you know, courageous and detached from comforts in the material things of this world if you really want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. What does that tell us? That brings us to the topic of today's uh, conversation, which is about virtues, particularly about human virtues. Okay. Human virtues are the foundation of the supernatural virtues. Okay. 
the supernatural virtues, which is all the uh, all the virtues related to our uh, our um, relationship with God is concerned. Right? You have the you have the theological virtues in there. You have the cardinal virtues in there. You have the uh, moral virtues in there. All of that a grouping a grouping of virtues is what you can call supernatural virtues. Now, in this hierarchy of virtues. There is a level which is purely human. And you call those human virtues. Human virtues are good habits. Simply, simply defined, they're called good habits. Good habits that can be acquired through practice. Okay? Practice, 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 practice. If you, re if you uh, require 10,000 hours to practice uh, uh, your instruments of music in order to uh, gain some level of perfection in it, well, the same thing is true with our human virtues. To practice the virtue of order, to practice the virtue of punctuality, to practice the virtue of... Uh, what other virtues do we hammer on all the time here in the house? Obedience. Huh? O obedience. Okay? Uh, 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 sincerity. Okay? Um, uh, you know all, all the virtues that we that we normally encourage you to practice at home. Right? Um, all of these are called human virtues because they try to they try to perfect our human nature. See, remember how man is uh, is born with a broken human nature, right? And if you recall what we were talking about yesterday, God is calling us to perfection. Right? Be perfect as my heavenly father is perfect. Well, what will help us to become perfect even just on the human plane? You call those the human virtues. The good practices that we need to do every day in order to help us become better human beings. And when we are better human beings, then the grace of God and the supernatural virtues We'll have an easier time, so to speak, working on us to make us saints. Okay? But if we, if we do not have a good foundation on the human virtues, if we do not practice the human virtues well, we would be hard-pressed to live the supernatural virtues uh, to an extent uh, acceptable to God and to a sanctifiable level. For example, we, we cannot hope to live the virtue of charity, okay? love for our neighbor, if we cannot even live the virtue of friendship. Okay? So friendship is a human virtue. Okay? Uh, a cheerfulness is a human virtue. Uh, these, are, these are virtues that, that you need if you are even to, to uh, practice uh, the virtue of charity. Of course, charity... Uh, together with hope uh, and faith are infused in baptism. They're infused virtues in baptism. But nevertheless, they need to grow. Okay? They need to grow through grace and through our own practice. But if we do not have a good foundation on the human virtue of friendship, for example, then we cannot hope to go too far in the practice of charity. Okay? We cannot uh, practice the cardinal virtue of justice. If we don't practice fairness, fairness is the human virtue counterpart or the beginning, the starting point of the virtue of justice to give to each his due. Okay? You cannot practice that virtue properly if you do not practice fairness well. Okay? You cannot uh, 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 what else? practice fortitude if you do not uh, practice punctuality with consistency. If you do not practice courage. Eh? So human virtues are the foundations of all the other supernatural virtues. And that is why it is very important for us to practice the human virtues every day. Every day. And, and really come up with resolutions of how to improve on the human virtues. And you know. As we were saying yesterday, we all know our defects. We all know which kinds of virtues we lack, right? And that's why in the examination of conscience, we ask ourselves at night, right? 
what are the things I can improve on tomorrow? What are the good things I did today? Good things would be virtues, which I could do better tomorrow. Okay? So those are the things we need to focus on. And, uh-oh, what was that? And help ourselves to improve on every day. Okay? And look, you know, uh, uh, just to demonstrate to you how important human virtues are and how they are the foundation of many things. Okay? You know, uh, it's, it's very... It's very common that we hear about uh, personal development gurus, right? Personal development gurus who teach us how to uh, how to be good workers, how to be uh, uh, good parents, how to be good this and that. You know what they're talking about? <laughs> the only secret they're talking about to develop yourselves really is to develop your virtues. Right? And let me give you an example of this. Let me give you an example of this. Uh, many years ago, I don't know whether the first time I, uh, I ever read this book, it must have been 25 years, 30 years ago already, I don't remember. Uh, I'm trying to look at the copyright here. Uh, you would, you would uh, be familiar with Stephen Covey, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. <laughs> You open up this book, and the first time I was reading it, I was really amused. This one became a bestseller, really. Up to now, it's a bestseller. But folks, what is this book talking about? This book is nothing but a compilation of virtues. Virtues. Human virtues. Another popular book, From Values to Action. Eh? Here it's called values, but it's the same thing. Values uh, in, the, in the vocabulary of some people is equivalent to virtues. Values and virtues. Another popular management book. What does it talk about? Virtues. Uh, Brendan Bouchard. Uh, this is one of, my, one of the latest books that came out. Actually, just came out this month. High Performance Habits. Okay. Any one of you who's uh, familiar with uh, internet marketing and internet marketing gurus, Brendan Bouchard is one of the uh, uh, well, upcoming, well, maybe not really upcoming, uh, he's been around, but uh, one of the more popular um, gurus nowadays of uh, uh, high performance and stuff like that. Well, what is he talking about? Virtues. Virtues, virtues. And you know, some 20 years ago, has it been? 20 years ago? No, huh? Somebody by the name of, uh, of uh, Dr. Kriachko also came up with a book, right? Making work values work. What did he talk about? Virtues. How are, we, how are we going to improve ourselves at our work? By practicing the virtues. See? Making work values work, folks. It's no longer available in the market, but uh, it, it will come back. It's going to make a comeback. Okay? I'm just editing it. It's going to make a comeback. But look, virtues, virtues, virtues. And see, virtues are nothing new. We Catholics and our Catholic uh, forebears have been talking about virtues since time immemorial. Okay? Uh, in fact, not only us Catholics, but uh, uh, our, our um, uh, Greek uh, philosophy heroes, all the way from Plato, Aristotle, you know, Socrates, they have been talking about virtues, virtues as the means of human perfection. Okay? So, uh, virtues have been around since time immemorial, and we've been talking about it, we've been perfecting the way we acquire these virtues for our own personal development. Because we understand that the virtues are the foundations for our spiritual growth, eh? our supernatural growth. The grace of God builds upon uh, these virtues that we acquire on our own. Now look, there's so many excellent, excellent books on virtues that you can pick up in bookstores, in Catholic bookstores, to learn how these human virtues can be lived. See? Uh, look at this. We have uh, I have a book on philosophical virtues and psychological strengths. This is a little bit more advanced. Why was that first thing I picked up? Anyway, Peter Kreeft, one of the more important uh, contemporary authors we have nowadays, has Back to Virtues. See, 
going back to basics. <laughs> Nowadays, we talk about high performance. We talk about seven habits of highly effective people. It, it's all a matter of going back to the basic practices of the human virtues. See? Learning the virtues. It's available from Sophia Press. See? Learning the virtues. There. Another very thick book on virtues. The book of virtues. All of these things, guys, you can avail of online from Sophia Press, from uh, many other Catholic bookstores. Excellent, excellent discussions. I actually have plenty more books in my library here. I just couldn't bring everything to the dining table. But plenty of books on virtues which can help us really understand the, uh, how to live out the human virtues in our daily lives. Okay? And you parents out there, if I may give you a parenting tip, you know, make your life easier, make your family life a lot easier by helping your kids practice the virtues. If your kids practice the virtues now, their life's going to be easier. You would have contributed a lot to their uh, personal, human, and spiritual development and growth if you hammer on the practice of virtues every day. My own kids know that. I sound like a broken record to them every day when I tell them about order, 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 order. I tell them about punctuality, 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 punctuality. I tell them about cleanliness, cleanliness, cleanliness. Pick up your, your mess, clean up your tables. And Joe is being a broken record now this morning, <laughs> repeating all of the things I talk to them about. And everything has to do with virtues. Virtues, virtues, virtues. If they learn the human virtues, then it would be a little bit easier to talk about piety, to talk about charity, to talk about understanding, to talk about fortitude, to talk about justice, to talk about sincerity, to talk about all the other supernatural virtues that can bring us closer to God and an inch closer to sanctity every day. If we work on our human perfectibility, we are on the road to sanctity. Okay, folks. Start getting your books. Read up on the virtues. And practice them every day. That's it for us. Have a good day, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Uh, my chorus. Bye-bye. <laughs>